Hello, it's a lovely, lovely good morning from here in Delhi as always and hope that each one of you are absolutely fine. So now in this particular session we are starting a pretty simple chapter after having what we call wrapped off valuation of goodwill. Now we are moving over to valuation of share. And now even this particular chapter at your level is given in a, in a very elementary manner to be very honest with you but in spite of that because it's a part of syllabus so we have to do it and we are going to do it. So here we go and start this particular chapter. Valuation of shares, that's the topic, that's the chapter which we are going to now start in a short while, valuation of shares. I have already written the title. Now, as far as valuation of shares is concerned, quite obviously, suppose I have invested my money in a particular company, correct? If I have invested my money in a particular company, then let me actually just adjust the lightings a bit, correct? So, well, I was talking about this particular fact. Suppose if I have invested in a particular company, obviously, why I invest? One reason is that actually, Basically, I am interested in having some income out of that. In fact, to be very honest with you, most of the investors have this intention to earn some income by way of their investments, correct? And uh, at the same time, that, that income could be in the form of dividend, as I said. And many people actually invest in an entity just for the purpose of not only just earning income, but the moment any benefit arises, Benefit arises in the in the sense means suppose I have invested in a particular entity and right now I purchase the share let us say at the rate of 20 and just after a month the price per share of that particular entity's share I'm talking about has gone up to say 30 40. So I may be tempted to sell my shares that mean here my intention is to earn quick bucks. So there are basically two types of intentions one I just want to hold down my shares keep on earning the what we call income for a prolonged period of time, then there is an intention that I should make a quick money by trading in the shares, correct? That means I am holding down the share just for the fact that the moment the price in the market would rise, I am going to dis what we call dispose it off. So besides that, there is another intention for valuation of shares. Why we value the shares? Quite obviously, as I said, because I have invested. So I'm interested in knowing actually what price these shares can fetch me. As I just said a moment ago, one intention is to earn income. Suppose I'm interested today in selling my shares. Quite obviously, I'm interested in knowing what price my share can fetch to me. If suppose I'm having 1000 share and through calculation, I come to know that per share can be sold in the market at the rate of 25. So this way I can estimate that 1000 into 25 I will get by what we call disposing of my shares. On the other hand, there is another intention for valuation of shares. Let us say I am a very heavy investor. I have invested very heavily in a particular entity. Because my investment is in bigger lots, quite obviously I am quite concerned with respect to my investments. So at a particular point of time, say I am interested in knowing what exactly is the situation of that particular company or should I say what exactly is the situation of my investment because I have invested very heavily in that particular company. I want to know whether my investment is safe or not. Are you getting my point? So there is another intention to value the share. Accordingly, on the basis of these intentions, there are several methods for valuation of shares. However, first of all, we will see that there are two broad methods. We'll talk about others too, but there are two broad methods. One method is known as what we call net assets method and each one of you have heard about it. It is also known as assets backing method. And another method is known as earning per share method. Commonly sometimes people call it yield method too. So one by one we are going to discuss all these things. So here we go and discuss. So as I said, there are two broad methods. One is known as assets backing method assets backing method. First we shall talk about this assets backing method. Assets backing method. It is also known as net assets method. In fact you have already done it so many times assets backing method or net assets method.
Generally, this methodology is adopted by such investors who have invested very heavily in a particular entity. Correct? So, I write here, generally, generally, this method is adopted this method is adopted by investors who have invested who have invested heavily or heavy amounts in shares of in shares so generally this methodology is adopted by investors who have invested large amount correct they are more concerned with the safety of what we call their money. Such investors, such investors such investors are more concerned are more concerned with safety of their investment obviously because I have invested very heavy amount I am concerned about this particular effect whether my investment is safe or not such investors are more concerned with safety of their investments then how they would actually find out whether their investment is safe or not they will compute intrinsic value of share through net assets method or what we call assets backing method such shareholders or such investors I should write such investors are interested in such investors are interested in intrinsic value you have heard this particular uh, word if you remember under business combination we used it so many times so such investors are interested in intrinsic value intrinsic value generally we call it IVS intrinsic value of shares so such investors are interested in intrinsic value of shares intrinsic value of the shares simply tells what worth of assets are backing your what we call worth of share what I mean to say suppose if I have purchased uh, rupees 10 shares of a particular company one share is of rupees 10 an intrinsic value let us say is more than 10 it means my investment is safe that means in order to back 10 companies having what we call more uh, more than 10 assets to back up my investment so it means my investment will be safe so such investors are interested in intrinsic value of shares so now the next question is how intrinsic value of shares is computed IVS is computed through net assets method or assets backing method through net assets method
और एसिड्स बैकिंग मेथड एसिड्स बैकिंग मेथड हाउ टू कंप्यूट जस्ट पे अटेंशन मेथडोलॉजी और स्टेप्स In order to compute what we call intrinsic value of share, what we require, we will consider all assets. And please pay attention, because now we are not doing the valuation of goodwill. In case of valuation of goodwill, I did tell that we never take non-trade investments, and we never take, as I said, what we call any non-operating assets. But while computing intrinsic value of shares. whenever we are going to take assets we will include non trade investment also besides that we will include even non operating assets correct so that is why i will write here all assets all assets including non trade investments including non trading investments and non operating assets non operating asset i gave you the example in case of valuation of goodwill non operating asset mean for example a piece of land which we have purchased but we are not using it for business purpose rather we are holding it down for the purpose of sale so in that case it is considered as non operating asset and non operating asset are generally not considered as part of what we call assets in the context of goodwill but here and almost everywhere barring goodwill everywhere non trading investment and non operating asset will be included under asset non trading investment and non operating assets so all assets we will consider excluding however we never consider valueless assets because valueless assets are not considered assets at all excluding valueless assets valueless assets means preliminary expenses underwriting commission valueless assets or fictitious asset as you call it so valueless assets are not considered as asset so they will not be included so we will consider all assets correct and from there on we shall then subtract all liabilities less all liabilities when i say all liabilities it means external liabilities sundry creditor bills payable outstanding expenses etc then each one of us know what we get by subtracting liabilities correct by subtracting liabilities from asset we get net assets and so many times i have already told you net assets is also known as capital employed it is also known as assets available for shares assets available for shareholders now if there would be any preference share capital then we will subtract here claims of preference shareholders claims of preference shareholders preference shareholders if there would be any preference share capital 
then you are going to subtract their claims. Their claims means A. Preference share capital decides areas of preference dividend. Areas of preference dividend. If there are any areas, you are going to subtract it. So this total makes preference shareholders claim. So if, if there is any preference share capital, you will have to subtract from the assets available for shareholders. Now you would get assets available for equity share. Assets available for equity shareholders. Equity shareholders. So now you will get assets available for equity shareholders. Once you get that, then all you need to do is to divide it by number of equity shares. Number of equity shares. You divide it by number of equity shares. By dividing it by number of equity shares, what we get? We get intrinsic value of share. We get IVS. IVS, if it is more than face value of share, that means your investment is safe. And if it is not, then your investment is not safe. Are you getting my point or not? Before I move over to other part, let me actually explain. We have computed net assets very easily here. Suppose in the question, sometime assets and liabilities are not given. Then how will you compute assets available for shareholders? That is important point to understand. See here, try to understand this point. Suppose this is the balance sheet of a particular company, just for a while. Let us say in the balance sheet there is property, plant and equipment, PPE, that is fixed asset. Let us say fixed asset are worth rupees 5 lakhs. Let us say there are current assets to the extent of, let us say, 8 lakhs. And we presume for a while there are some valueless assets, VLA, like preliminary expense, underwriting commission, etc. Valueless assets, let us say, are 1 lakh. Correct? For simplicity's sake, we are taking only 3 items towards the asset side. 14 lakh is the total, I think so. Isn't it? Now, I move over to the liability side. In the liability side, let us say there are liabilities that is long term and short term, non-current and current liability. Let us say liability is equal to 8 lakhs. Uh, just wait. Liability is equal to let us say 10 lakhs. Mm, just wait. Uh, let me think. I will make it 6 lakhs. Liability is equal to 6 lakhs. Besides, let us say there are items of other equity. Other equity means reserves and surplus. Let us say there are some reserves to the extent of 2 lakh. Correct? And let us say equity share capital. Equity share capital is 4 lakhs. And one share is of 10 each. Correct? That is 10, 12. And there is 10% preference share capital. 10% preference share capital. Let us say again it is of 2 lakhs. Suppose if I ask you through this balance sheet, compute assets available for equity share. How will you compute? 
assets available for equity shares in order to compute assets because that is the fulcrum by having assets available for equity shares all we need now is number of equity share and we'll divide it to get intrinsic value so assets available for equity shares in fact I'm interested in computing assets available for equity shares so that I am in a position to compute intrinsic value of share. In order to compute assets available for equity share, just a moment I told you we will consider all assets. So I will consider property, plant and equipment and property, plant and equipment as you can see is 5 lakhs. So I will write here 5 lakhs, correct? Then besides that we shall consider current asset and current asset in this case is 8 lakhs. I have already told you valueless asset that is fictitious asset are not considered as an asset so total of my asset is 30 lakhs if there would have been any revised value I would have considered that remember one thing then I will subtract the liabilities all the external liabilities so liability generally stands for external liability which happens to be in this case 6 lakhs so I'm left up with how much 7 lakh what is this 7 lakh this 7 lakh is assets available for shareholders it is known as assets for shareholders correct assets available for shareholders now you have computed assets available for shareholders just have a look is there any preference share capital yes in this case there happens to be a preference share capital so preference share capital you will subtract preference shareholders claim will be considered 2 lakh there are no areas of dividend so what I get I get 5 lakh this 5 lakh will be considered as assets available for equity shares it will be considered as assets for equity shares without any iota of doubt now in order to compute intrinsic value of shares all we need is assets available for equity shares and we are going to divide it by what we call number of equity share isn't it so in order to compute intrinsic value of share we need assets available for equity share which is 5 lakh and we need number of equity share number of equity share in this case is 40,000 so if I divide 5 lakh by 40,000 calculator is lying here just wait for a moment here it is so 5 lakh 12.5 I think it will be right it is so intrinsic value is rupees 12.5 it means your investment is absolutely safe as a shareholder your share is having a face value of 10 suppose today this company gets liquidated let it gets liquidated still your investment is safe because your company is in a position to pay each asset sorry each share of 10 each at least 12.50 worth of assets that is why I am saying that intrinsic value of share signifies the capability of the company to honor your investment or not especially in times of crisis now but my discussion was not with respect to uh, the worth of intrinsic value of share my discussion was often we may find in the question that balance sheet is not available and question may ask us to compute what we call intrinsic value of share so how under those circumstances you are going to compute intrinsic value of shares that's the moot point so you need to know that assets available for equity shares can be computed this way and assets available for equity share can be computed this way also and generally this methodology you should adopt only when balance sheet is not given when balance sheet is given always go through this particular what we call methodology correct assets for equity share assets for equity share holders can also be computed this way round just have a look here 
जस्ट है बिलुक है सी वी इन ऑर्डर टू कंप्यूट एसेट्स अवेलेबल फॉर इक्विटी शेयर वी हैव टेकन प्रॉपर्टी प्लांट एंड इक्विपमेंट करेंट एसेट एंड लाइबिलिटीज डेट मीन वी आर लेफ्ट ऑफ विद नाउ दीज आइटम्स इक्विटी शेयर कैपिटल रिजर्व एंड वैल्यू लेस एसेट सो विद दी हेल्प ऑफ दीज आइटम्स वी कैन ऑल्सो कंप्यूट एसेट्स अवेलेबल फॉर इक्विटी शेयर हाउ वी कैन कंप्यूट सी हेयर आई विल राइट इक्विटी शेयर कैपिटल Equity share capital is four lakh. I will write preference share capital. Preference share capital is two lakh. I will write reserves because reserves is also considered as part of equity. Reserves belongs to owners. Two lakhs. If reserves belong to owners, then valueless assets. Also belongs to owners, so valueless asset is a sort of loss you can say. So less valueless asset. Valueless asset is one lakh. Now you can see that assets available for shareholders we can get now seven lakh. This seven lakh is actually assets available for shareholder because we have written here preference share capital also. So it will be assets. available for shareholders this is your asset available for shareholders is it clear to you or not once you have computed this part then all you need to do in order to find out assets available for equity shares you need to subtract preference share capital now assets available for equity share is 5 lakh as you can see so it is also known as liability side approach correct so now you can get assets for equity shares assets for equity shareholders so you can get assets available for equity shares you got my point in fact suppose balance sheet is not given in that case it is better not to include preference share capital directly take equity share capital reserve and valueless asset and you can directly what we call get assets available for equity share is it clear to you or not so if you have done this particular method now first we will pick up some questions on the basis of this method before we attempt the other part is it clear to you or not correct so after getting a look and insight into this one Now it's time to actually pick up some questions. So, for the same, I pick up question number. First of all, we'll begin with question number two. Question number two. Question number two says, following is the balance sheet of Hip Hop Limited. and in the balance sheet you can see we have 10000 12% preference shares of rupees 1 lakh besides 30000 equity shares of 10 each 3 lakh then we have general reserve debenture redemption fund now debenture redemption fund is considered as a free reserve it is not considered as a liability remember one thing correct it is an appropriation so it is not considered as a liability however you have three liability notes payable 10% debentures and sundry creditors you have three liability besides you have sundry assets preliminary expenses discount on issue of debenture are valueless asset and profit and loss account is written towards the asset side however nowadays actually profit and loss account is not written towards the debit side that is towards the asset side rather it is shown as an item of subtraction but anyway because we have been given question this way so we have to move accordingly so it is also a sort of valueless asset it is an accumulated loss in fact all these three items are not assets now question states below that debenture interest is owing for 6 months so debenture interest is outstanding 10% debentures are there 6% interest is outstanding and question also states that dividend on preference share are in arrear for one year so one year 
if the question states clearly that there are some areas of dividend, then only you will consider the area of preference dividend. Now, assuming the assets are worth their book value, so question is stated very clearly that whatever book value, correct, that is the real value, show the appro approximate valuation of shares. Now, below question has asked two things, I will explain these two things also, but let me compute what we call, in this case, intrinsic value of share. In order to compute, question number two, first of all, we are picking up. In order to compute the intrinsic value of share, what we are going to do, first of all, I am going to compute assets available for equity share. Obviously, assets available for equity share can be found out, you know, very easily. So, I take sundry assets. Revised value is not available, so I will simply take 5,48,000. I have already told you rest of the items towards the asset side are not assets, so we are not going to consider those. Now I am going to subtract from here. Three liabilities which we are having. One is notes payable. Now notes payable, as you can see, is... 15,000, so I will subtract 15,000. Besides, we have 10% debentures. So, 10% debentures I will write. 10% debenture in this case happens to be 50,000. Then we have sundry creators. Sundry creators are 95,000. However, you shouldn't forget writing interest on debenture outstanding interest on debenture outstanding it is also a liability interest on debenture outstanding for six months fifty thousand is your amount of debenture on which debenture holder will get ten percent interest for six months that will be 2500 so 2500 so by subtracting what we call these items from 548000 what we get I did not require to tell you it is 385500 and it will be your assets available for shareholders. It is known as net assets. It is known as assets available for shareholders. Once you have assets for shareholders, from there on you will subtract preference shareholders claim. Preference shareholders claim. Now, preference shareholders claim are in the form of preference share capital. Preference share capital is 1 lakh A. Preference share capital, which is 1 lakh given to you. Correct? Besides, you have areas of dividend in this question. So, areas of dividend. Areas of dividend. The question has cited that one year's dividend is remaining. Rate of dividend is 12%. Preference share capital is worth 1 lakh. So one year dividend will be equal to 12,000. So preference shareholders claim 1 lakh 12,000. We shall subtract. We shall subtract. Correct? Generally, actually these are the assets available for shareholder. Try to understand the logic. Suppose this company gets liquidated. So our sundry asset will realize at this value. And from this realization will pay off our liability. So this amount belongs to shareholders. Now the amount which belongs to shareholder, generally preference shareholder has a preferential right over this amount. So that is why we always subtract preference shareholders claim first. Now, 
remaining amount belongs to equity shareholder so we call it assets available for equity shares assets for equity shares or equity shareholders you subtract this figure you will get 2 lakh 73500 2 lakh 73500 so now you are in a position to find out intrinsic value of share assets available for equity shares are already with you now you divide number of divided by number of equity shares number of equity shares 30000 shares is already given in the question so 273500 divided by 30000 you get 9.12 approximately it means this value which we are getting and mostly we, we will compute intrinsic value this way round only however in this question this is answer number one why because question is stated find out the value if preference shares are preferential as to capital and areas are areas of dividend are payable in winding up indirectly it means if preference shareholder has a preferential claim and later on question states that if preference shares are preferential as to capital but areas are not payable in the second case see here in the second case this is your answer to first part correct this is answer to the first part of the question if you want to deliver the answer to second part first of all you will have to compute assets available for shareholder and you will compute that way only from asset you will subtract the liability so you will compute assets for shareholders which is 3,85,500 as we know now in part 2 question state that preference shareholder are preferential but only with respect to capital so in second case when I will subtract preference shareholders claim I will not subtract areas of dividend I will subtract only preference share capital which is 1 lakh just to ask question may tilt this way correct just to test you in fact question examiner may twist the question this way whether you are able to understand it or not however in practical life it is never done preference shareholder are always preferential with respect to capital and dividend but because question is asking this way so we have to answer it that way around so 285500 in this case will be considered 285500 will be considered assets available for equity shares it will be assets for equity shares now you will divide it by number of equity share obviously in this case your intrinsic value will be pretty higher a bit higher sorry because this time asset available for equity shareholders are higher so 9.52 approximately it will be this is your intrinsic value of share correct in the upcoming session we'll continue with this topic of course this question is over but we'll still pick up some more question on this particular topic